Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the development of a pole zero plot for a signal. That is, we will look at how to do a pole zero plot for a given signal. Specifically, in this video, we will look at an example. That is, example x of n is given as a power n for the values of n between 0 and m minus 1 and the signal is 0 otherwise. So, this is the definition of the signal and the value of a is given to be greater than 0 that is a is greater than 0. Now, if the value of a is less than 1 then this is basically a decaying signal within a small window of size m that is for m values and if a is greater than 1 then this is actually a slightly increasing function uh, and but it is uh, still a finite valued function that is from 0 to m minus 1. So, it will have a structure either like this or like this, but the value, but the signal is still finite. It is for a less than 1 and of course, greater than 0 and this is for a greater than 1. Now, the question is what is the corresponding pole 0 plot in the z plane? So, pole 0 plot. So, to construct the pole 0 plot, first we need to know the z transform of this signal. So, we consider the z transform that is x of z defined as the sum defined as the sum n is equal to 0 to infinity x of n z power minus n since we are talking about causal signals. So, now x of n is basically a power n only from n for n equal to 0 to m minus 1. So, this summation becomes n is equal to 0 to m minus 1 a power n z power minus n. Now, by comparing this summation to the following uh, finite geometric series that is n is equal to 0 to m minus 1 alpha power n is actually given by 1 minus alpha power capital M divided by 1 minus alpha. So, here alpha is basically a into z inverse. So, this z transform becomes z transform becomes 1 minus uh, it becomes 1 minus a z inverse whole power capital M or uppercase M and then denominator is 1 minus a z inverse. So, that is the z transform. Therefore, the z transform of the sig given signal is x of z is equal to 1 minus a z inverse whole power M divided by 1 minus a z inverse. And now, in order to find the poles and zeros, we have to rewrite this rational z transform as follows. That is, it can be rewritten as z power m minus a power m divided by z power m z power minus 1 or z inverse multiplied by z minus a. That is, we are taking z power minus m common in the numerator and z power minus 1 common in the denominator. So, we get this new expression. Now, we can clearly see that now we can find the zeros as solutions of the equation z power m minus a power m equal to 0. So, to solve this equation all we have to do is since the value of a is given to be positive. So, we have z k that is the zeros are given by a times e power j 2 pi k over m. This exponential of j 2 pi k by m are basically the roots of the unity that is these are the complex roots of the uh, number 1 or unity and therefore, the our zeros are a times this uh, complex roots of unity. One way to easily understand this solution is z k is, is written as a power m and then 1 whole power 1 by m. So, that means we have uh, roots of unity that is 1 by uh, mth roots of unity. So, this must be equal to a power m by m that is a and then roots of unity are given by e power j 2 pi k by m because e power j 2 pi k is actually equal to 1. So, its roots are e power j 2 pi k by m. Therefore, the zeros are given by a into e power j 2 pi k over m. So, these are the zeros. Now, to find the poles we have to solve the equation z minus a. So, that is z minus a is equal to 0. Therefore, the pole is at a. However, this pole at uh, p equal to a and the 0 at uh, for k equal to 0 that is z of 0 is equal to a these two actually cancel each other that is 
the zero at z zero is equal to a. That is the uh, first solution k equal to zero. So z zero is equal to a. And then the pole at p is equal to a. These two cancel each other because at uh, the same value we cannot have both a zero and a pole. So we cancel these terms. Or in other words, we are basically cancelling the term z minus a both in the numerator and the denominator. That is, we are cancelling the term z minus a in the numerator with the z minus a in the denominator. And also note that in the denominator, in the denominator, we have z power m into z power minus one. That is, we have z power m minus one. That means there are m minus one poles at z equal to zero. That is, we have z power m minus one is equal to zero. We have, we have m minus one poles at origin or at zero. That is at origin. So the z transform can now be written in the factorized form as z minus z one. That is, we start with the exponential of j two pi one by m, and then z minus z two, and so on up to z minus. Z m minus one. That is, we only keep m minus one zeros. And the first one is discarded because it is cancelling with the denominator z minus a. And the, in the denominator, we have z power m minus one. So to summarize, we have m minus one zeros at z k equal to e power j two pi k over m, where the values of k are from one to one to m minus one. The values of k are from one to m minus one. Uh, basically, there are integers from one to m minus one, and we also have m minus one poles at p k or p k is equal to zero, where all the values are the same. That is, we have m minus one poles at the same point. Therefore, we can draw the pole zero plot as follows. We can draw the pole zero plot as follows. So we have m minus one zeros and m minus one poles. So these m minus one zeros are located at two uh, the angles two pi by m, four pi by m, six pi by m, and so on. So in this way we can plot uh, both poles and zeros in the z plane. That is, uh, this m minus one indicates that there are m minus one poles at the origin. That is, at z equal to zero, and the radius of this circle is given by the value a. The angular separation between these two zeros is given by 2 pi by m so to summarize we have done a pole zero plot for a given signal the signal is defined as the signal is defined as x of n is equal to a power n for values of n between 0 and m minus 1 and 0 otherwise so when the value of a is between 0 and 1 it is a decaying signal within the window and if it is greater than 1 it is a growing signal within the window and the z and in order to construct the pole zero plot we need the z transform z transform for this signal x of z is found to be a rational z transform given as 1 minus a z inverse whole power m by 1 minus a z inverse and for finding the poles and zeros we have to rewrite this uh, rational z transform in this follow following uh, method that is z power m minus a power m divided by z power m minus 1 into z minus a that is this one is a factorized form of the z transform so from this form we can easily find the zeros and poles So in this case, the zeros are given by the solution of z power m minus a power m equal to zero. Uh, it is basically z k is equal to a into e power j two pi k by m, where the values of k are from zero to m minus one. So, and then poles are basically uh, at z equal to a and or p equal to a. That is one pole, and we also have m minus one poles at the origin. So since uh, we cannot have both the pole and zero at the same point. And or basically, we can cancel the term z minus a in the numerator with the denominator. The with the z minus a term in the denominator. So we only have m minus one zeros and m minus one poles, which is uh, basically demonstrated by this rational z transform in factorized form. We we can represent these poles and zeros on the z plane by using this pole zero plot. Basically, these circles represent the zeros. Um, these circles are. Separated by an angle of 2 pi by m, and they are all located on the circle of radius a, and the poles are at the origin z equal to zero, and we have m minus one poles at this point. Thanks for watching.